Here are five lore details in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League explained, and let's just start with the first one here. Okay, let's just start with Brainiac taking over the Justice League in this game. A lot of people are wondering about that, and it is explained in the game via the Codex audio logs. So it's very interesting on how the Justice League was taken over by Brainiac, and it does make sense, I guess, but it's at the cost of making Superman look kind of dumb. But basically what happens is that Brainiac lands on Earth and contacts the Justice League, and gives them the false pretense of having peaceful negotiations. The Justice League discussed the situation in this audio log here. This Brainiac wants to open negotiations aboard his ship. It's a trap. Agreed. That much is apparent. I hear you both, but we have to go in good faith. What if I had come to Earth and... Cal, buddy, I mean, let's be real. You didn't show up in a giant skull. I didn't choose how I got here, Flash. Now, I'll admit it's not the most inviting presence, but if we can avoid fighting altogether, we owe it to the people of Metropolis to try. They know the strength of the League, everyone does. Now let's show them our heart, our compassion, our recklessness. We can't just leave Metropolis undefended. We'll be in the thick of it, Bruce. Talks get nasty, we toss that thing right back into space. We're in this together, gang. The five of us united, there's nothing we can't do. Let's show them our intentions. Uh, you know what they say about good intentions, Clark. So there's like four or five audio logs explaining the whole Brainiac situation with the League, so I recommend watching them on YouTube somewhere, but basically, as we heard, Superman wanted to give Brainiac the benefit of the doubt since he's an alien just like Clark is. And Batman was telling him it's a trap the entire time and that he shouldn't be trusted. But they go with Superman's plan of meeting Brainiac anyway because the League was confident they can stop Brainiac if anything got out of control. But Brainiac was prepared for them because this Brainiac has already fought the Justice League in another universe so he was already prepared for them due to that fact. Because the Brainiac we see in this game is the Earth 2 Brainiac and not this universe's Brainiac. So because of that, Brainiac was able to subdue most of the League without much issue. However, Flash was able to get Diana and escape before they got caught too. Check out this audio tape. Oh god, my head. Sorry Diana. I broke the sound barrier to get us out of there. If we'd stayed a second longer, that, that thing would have gotten us all. He got... he got Cal. How did you even get Cal? Kryptonite, for one. But that's not important right now, Barry. Right. We need a plan. Do you have a plan? Civilians. We need to start evacuating the city. Get as many people as far away from that ship as possible. I'm on it. But then what? Hera, help me. I don't know. So this explains why Flash and Wonder Woman were the only two that weren't under Brainiac's control. I always thought it was just Wonder Woman's ability to resist my control that let her escape like she does in some comic iterations, but she was just rescued by Barry. And this also shows how OP this Brainiac is, I mean like this might be one of the most powerful versions of Brainiac just from this since he can easily stop the league, but he somehow loses the Suicide Squad, but whatever. Now, I don't like that Superman thinks that some alien that comes crashing down with the Skull ship wants to have peaceful negotiations and doesn't consider Batman's plan, you know, considering that he's the strategist of the team. And also, just like, why did you guys have to go to his ship to negotiate? Why couldn't you guys have picked a, you know, safer location, like maybe somewhere outside a ship so, you know, they were more prepared? I don't know why this happens to Superman a lot. In the Apocalypse War movie, the same thing basically happens where they listen to Superman and as a result, their whole universe is legit destroyed and Barry had to reset the timeline. So yeah, the whole situation is just kind of questionable. But that's basically how the League gets caught by Brainiac. It is interesting, I do love hearing the League talk as a team from these audio logs, but yeah, sucks to be the Justice League in this universe. So, a big question of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is Deadshot and his quote-unquote retcon. In Arkham City and Arkham Origins, there's a different Deadshot, same name with Floyd Lawton and same MO. And people are saying it's a retcon because of the race change. 
Deadshot is a different person altogether in Suicide so Squad I killed the Justice League. In the game though, I guess it's not actually a quote unquote retcon technically now because they have somewhat of an explanation for it, although it's kind of a complicated one. So a long time ago before this game came out, Rocksteady tweeted a picture of the Suicide Squad Deadshot saying that the other one's an imposter. And in the game, Boomerang actually asks Floyd if he's supposed to be white. In the Batman Museum, he actually interacts with the Arkham City Deadshot stand as well. Professional killer Deadshot was hired to assassinate several VIP targets, like myself, and Bruce Wayne and Batman. Close calls with death that night. I am not done with this phony steampunk ass looking dude. Though the Deadshot in Arkham City was a phony, according to this Deadshot, a fake. Now here's some more information for the Suicide Squad Deadshot we get. So according to his audio logs in the game, after his daughter Zoe was born, he hung up the Deadshot alias to be a father. And that's when this new Deadshot comes into play, the one we see in Arkham Origins and Arkham City. And apparently, he is damn near identical to the Suicide Squad Deadshot in every way. However, Suicide Squad Deadshot already killed the Arkham City Deadshot according to this audio log. So, they say you're dead shot. At least you think you're dead shot. Is that why they locked you up in here? <laughs> Whatever, man. Think you mean whoever. Funny. It is funny. The lab at Arkham ran full forensics when they brought you in. Your prints say you're dead shot. DNA does too. But... I'm a different shade of dead shot. Yeah, I'm getting that a lot lately. You got any theories? Look, buddy, this thing's a mystery to me, too. One I plan to work out. Just tell me when I get to see my daughter. Not for a long time, man. You hurt a lot of folks out there. Hell, you killed that other dead shot. You're a long way off privileges, Floyd. Never mind parole. You're going into solitary. Now, in the next two audio tapes, Floyd does actually mention how he killed the other Deadshot. He was tracking down the Arkham Deadshot and killed him, barely surviving the encounter since the other Deadshot barely missed the Suicide Squad Deadshot. But there's more, apparently. The Deadshot from the Arkham games is actually from another universe, or that's what's implied. Look at this audio tape. Ah, uh, Floyd Lawton. And without his faithful squad, no less. To what do I owe this unexpected visit? I need answers, Luther. We're all seeking answers, Lawton. It's our species' great folly. There was another dead shot out there. Would have been my exact damn match, down to the trigger finger, if he wasn't a white dude. How curious. That's the thing, Lex. After everything we've seen, there's zero doubt in my mind. He was me, but from somewhere else. Another Earth. First time you saw me, you recognized my getup. And I've been meaning to ask, what did happen to your dead shot? An interesting line of questioning, Mr. Lawton. But while I understand your logic, I don't appreciate the insinuation. So the Suicide Squad Deadshot is thinking that the Arkham Deadshot is from another universe, which, I don't know, sounds super unnecessary. And also, Arkham Origins to Arkham City is a very long time, right? Did the Suicide Squad Deadshot just not look for the Arkham Deadshot until later on in that fake Deadshot's career? And is the Arkham Deadshot from, like, the Lex 2's universe or from another universe? There's a lot of questions, maybe they'll elaborate more in the DLC or something, but yeah, that's the Deadshot lore. Take it as you will. Batman joining the Justice League. There's actually some lore in how Batman adjusts to the Justice League. In this game, it tells us that several years after Arkham Knight is when Superman contacts Batman to join the Justice League. Several years after Arkham Knight. So several can usually mean a minimum of at least three years. And since this game takes place five years after Arkham Knight, then that actually means that Batman has only been in the league for at least two years, which is interesting. Before that, he was just Nightmare Batman. And once he joins the team, he actually moves to Metropolis to operate there with the league. But how does Batman handle being a part of the Justice League? Well, it actually sounds like Batman had a difficult time adjusting to being on a team where everyone's an equal and are there to support each other. 
Listen to this dialogue him and Clark have in the Watchtower. Bruce, you're doing it again. You're no good to us unconscious. What would Alfred say? Alfred understands, Clark. Crime never. Crime doesn't sleep, yeah, yeah. And neither does the Watchtower. It's basically you. You helped us build it. It's crime never sleeps. Of course. Listen, you've got the support of the League now. This fight isn't yours alone. That's the commitment we made. I'm not ungrateful, Clark. And the League is working. I just need time to adjust. You know, Pa used to say to me, don't ask for lighter burdens, ask for broader shoulders. Cute. And easy to say when you can carry an entire planet on your shoulders. Very funny. Look, you're a smart guy, Bruce. The smartest guy I know. But you've got to let us help. Ah, you're right. I'll take a few hours off to sleep. Happy? Elated. Just do me one more favor. Take the cowl off first. So it looks like Batman was having a hard time adjusting to the League and they had to keep pestering him to take care of himself. It's really cool. There's another one where Flash and Diana make him say this cheesy hologram speech in the Hall of Justice for Justice Day when he doesn't want to do it. So it's pretty cool. Rocksteady did a really great job in characterizing the League in these audio tapes. Like, I might be underrating it. I think the way they talk to each other here is the perfect way that Justice League should talk with one another. I have to commend that from Rocksteady. That was a good job. However, it seems that Batman joins the Justice League after like four years post Arkham Knight and has to get used to this whole new world he's taking on. My only thing is I really wish we'd seen this. I think this is what people really wanted to see. It's just so cool when the League talks to each other like friends. I know I made a whole rant video about how they treated Batman poorly in this game, but I have a feeling they might try to fix that. We'll see though. If they do try to bring back the League and actually write it well, I might have to apologize for that video. Maybe. If the writing is good, like I said. Also, one last thing. It sounds like Batman may not be an original Justice League member in this universe. Superman asks him to join the Justice League, according to Jack Ryder. Maybe implying that the League was already established first and then Batman joins later on? I don't know. I hope that's not the case because it seems weird for Bats to not be an OG member. But we'll have to wait and see if they ever elaborate on that. So this is something that's been on my mind. Metropolis is destroyed, and there's a giant spaceship that may not be a global threat at the moment, but considering Brainiac took down the Justice League, it can be safe to assume that Brainiac is a global level threat. So it begs the question, where are the other DC heroes and why were they not contacted before the Suicide Squad? This game confirms that other superheroes are active and do exist in this universe. For example, Zatanna has posters all across the city. Zatanna is an extremely OP superhero in the DC universe. She might even be stronger than some League members. Where is she during all of this? She could definitely help. Another one is Green Arrow, although Green Arrow isn't as strong as Zatanna. Still a superhero, his building's in the game, and we know Green Arrow exists because there's an Argus agent that actually name drops Green Arrow. I don't think it's that weird. Like, okay, head of a shark, but that body's all man. Hey. For what it's worth, I think you're cooler than Green Arrow. And not only them, Aquaman also exists. There's Black Manta pictures on walls across the city that confirm Aquaman exists, since you can't have Black Manta without Aquaman. And also, Harley and King Shark actually have a conversation about Aquaman here. Sharky, what's Aquaman like? Why does everyone talk about the Atlantean? He talks to my fellow sea creatures, it's some kind of wonder. Meanwhile, I talk to you surface dwellers all the time, and no one makes a big deal about that. Hey, if it makes you feel better, Shark, you're one of the weirdest damn things I've ever seen. Thank you. And I can go on and on, like for example, Peacemaker exists in this universe now. You can find his logo and stuff here on the wall, but he probably couldn't do anything. But my point is, pretty much every DC hero exists in the Arkhamverse. But I guess like you can explain it. So maybe Aquaman in this universe doesn't go to the surface as much. Maybe he's just really invested in the sea and Atlantis and doesn't care what happens beyond that. Green Arrow, I mean, I guess you could chalk it up to him not being able to do anything really. Zatanna, I don't know. Maybe she's off on an adventure with Constantine or something. 
not being able to help. And maybe Argus did try to reach these kinds of heroes before the Suicide Squad, but who knows? Maybe they'll elaborate on this one too, like I keep saying, but uh, I, they don't really need to, you know, it's not their game, but it would be cool. The final one, where is the Bat Family? We get information for some of them, for others, not so much, but let's just try to break it down. So the Bat Family in this universe consists of Oracle, Tim Drake, Nightwing, Red Hood, and Alfred. And I say that's it. You can argue others too, like Gordon, but I'm just going to keep it at those five. So the first one I want to get out of the way is Alfred. That Superman Batman dialogue I showed you earlier confirms, or I guess heavily implies, that Alfred is still alive and well. Superman and Batman bring up Alfred in their conversation in a present tense, so to speak. So Alfred at the time of that dialogue is doing okay. But with the events of the game, that can change. What if Batman went after all his allies? And I bring this up because of this hologram scene in this Batcave. So in the scene, it's Batman basically telling Tim Drake, aka Robin, that the League has gone rogue and tells him how to stop them. However, we see in this scene that Robin's mask is on the floor with blood around it, heavily implying that evil Batman killed him. Which sucks. I hate this, but it looks like Tim Drake is dead now. We can't 100% confirm it, but it's heavily assumed, right? I don't want to believe it, but with the evidence presented, we kind of have to assume that Tim Drake is just dead in this universe, which really sucks. The next two are Nightwing and Oracle, and we don't know anything about what happens to them, at least from what I know. Batman mentions them saying they're his friends, but doesn't give us any clues or anything on their whereabouts. So I like to think that they're fine because of this, but maybe evil Batman did go after them and kill them, maybe thinking they could be threats. I really hope this isn't the case, and I doubt it, but I guess it's a possibility. But we don't know anything about their whereabouts, so I want to say they're alive and okay. Someone I actually wanted to talk about briefly that I didn't bring up initially was Catwoman. So I only bring her up because I don't have footage of this, I didn't record it when I heard it in my playthrough because I'm an idiot. But Harley does mention Catwoman. Harley sounded kind of sad and I forgot what her initial comment on her was, but she ends her statement wondering where Catwoman is. Source? Just trust me, bro. But, but like, for real, if somebody can confirm this for me, please do. I just don't have footage, I'm sorry. But this means that Catwoman is seemingly missing in action. Harley doesn't know what happened to her, but it's safe to say she's fine too if we don't know what happened to her. And last, but certainly not least, Red Hood. There's a lot of underlying information about him. So it looks like Red Hood is not on good terms with Batman at this point in the universe. Listen to what Batman says here real quick. I wanted to say goodbye, Tim. After everything, I'm proud to call you Nightwing and Oracle, my friends. So Bruce brings up his friends, Tim, Nightwing, and Oracle, but not Jason. This can be telling. It looks like Bruce and Jason aren't on the best of terms likely due to Red Hood being a killer and Batman, you know, not being a killer. And this may have clashed their ideologies with each other to the point of them not being on good terms. Not enemies or anything, but yeah, they may not keep in contact with each other. And that's not it. He also says this about Jason. Team up with Nightwing, Oracle, and if you can find him, Jason. If you can find Jason. So this implies that Jason is not in contact with the entire Bat family, not just Bruce. Jason is a lone wolf in this universe, it seems. He does his own thing, separate from the Bat family. But Batman does have respect for him, obviously, since, first of all, Jason is his son. And he does tell Tim about him and to find him if he can. But it looks like Jason in this universe has some beef, maybe, with the Bat family. But they still will contact him if the situation arises. Interesting take, and it's a shame we don't know more. I mean, maybe we do. The game's only been out for like a week, so I don't know every Easter egg or piece of lore that I might be missing here. But yes, the Bat family, outside of Tim, I think, are all still alive and doing well in their own respective way. I hate what they did to Tim, but maybe he's still alive. We can only hope. It also begs the question of what the rest of the Bat family are doing. Are, are Nightwing and Oracle and Red Hood just ignoring the whole Evil League situation or what? Hopefully, like I keep saying every single time, they elaborate on this. But yes, those are five lore details explained in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Honestly, this game went a lot of directions I don't agree with. But you know what? I like to think that this is an alternate branching timeline from Arkham Knight having its own canon with the universe and it's not canon to the actual Arkham timeline. Ultimately though, my opinion on what's canon or not doesn't matter because I didn't make the game so it's not my call. It's just a personal thing, I guess. 
But even if you don't agree with something, just go outside, smile. It's okay. The world is still revolving. I hate what they did to Batman in this game, but whatever. Maybe they'll fix it somehow. But what do you think about this? Let me know. Any support in the video is really appreciated, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe and uh, peace.